the chance to be here. My name is Frank Garner, and uh, I'm from Kalispell, and uh, that's where I grew up and raised my family. And the quick 60-second uh, ad for me is uh, I'm a, a retired uh, police chief, and uh, I served four terms uh, in the legislature. And uh, I've got to make one more correction. I, I, it was the um, the ARPA Health Commission I was the, the, the chairman of, not state administration, though I served on that committee for, for three terms. I was also the vice chair of the uh, Transportation Committee and uh, s served with the chair of the Transportation Committee, uh, Denley Logie, for, um, it, it seemed like, 108 years. But, uh, but uh, no, it was, it was, a, it was a, a pleasure of mine to, uh, to serve with him, and he's a, a highly trusted colleague of mine, and uh, it's good to see him here. I'm here today as a volunteer with a group called Montanans for Election Reform, um, and we are involved in uh, two initiatives. They are 126, CI 126 and 127. I'll tell you more about those in a minute that are intended to put you uh, back in charge of your election system. And so some people will, will say, well, I didn't know I wasn't in charge of my election system. And I'm gonna give you some good examples of those here in just a few minutes. Um, of why you are less in charge of your system than uh, me, than I would personally like to see, and that uh, I think is is good for our for our state and for our country. So to so to begin with, sometimes when I give this talk, I'll start with two pictures, and I'll have one is a, a literal dumpster fire; it's a dumpster on fire. The other picture is a picture of a tub full of puppies and kitties, and I say. You know, on the spectrum, where which one of these pictures represent your current view of our political system? And it's amazing how many dumpster fire uh, <laughs> choices I get, as opposed to the puppies and kitties, right? I mean, and I don't have to, uh, I don't, I don't have to take a poll. Um, although there are plenty of those out there, right? Um, from talking to my neighbors, people across this state, and and literally across this country to know that there are deep concerns among us about our, our political system and how it serves us. So here's the good news. If you think it's a home run and we are just doing a fantastic job in all corners, then what I'm about to tell you may not be for you. But for the rest of us, there is a chance for us to do better. And uh, the coalition that I'm uh, part of, <coughs> now that my voice is changing, is, uh, <laughs> is uh, sincerely concerned about the direction we're headed and knows there are reforms that are possible in our election system that can change that. And so to begin with, our group um, is a bipartisan group and a nonpartisan group. Um, if you look at our board, uh, we're all Montanans. Um, we're Republicans and Democrats. We have a independent slash libertarian on there too that, that uh, is uh, concerned about uh, access um, to the ballot and and uh, making sure you have choices. And to begin with, I want you to understand that as I begin to talk about these, this is really about your choice in what system you use to hire people for the important job of governing. So with these two initiatives, I don't get to change anything. My coalition can't change anything. What I get out of it is one vote just like you. You get to decide whether you want to keep the current system you have or you want to change it. And that's the first important thing for us to know. And so when we, we talk a little bit about the, the uh, whys besides the uh, you know, puppies and kitties routine, um, you, know, you, you can, I think, turn any page to just about any um, political report out there and find out nationally, state-wide, uh, that there's a lot of polarization in our country. Now there's a lot of reasons for that, right? We can talk about how we, we now, the areas we get our uh, information from, you know, on social media where everybody's an editor, when by the way, um, if you're on one of the platforms, They've got algorithms that are going to keep sending you information to reinforce what you already think, right? 
Now, and, and I'm fortunate that I've been married 43 years and my wife has not learned that that trait in our marriage. She does she, she doesn't keep telling me what I want to hear, you know. But when we when we go out on social media, it is um, you know you you have um, a, a world we don't have Walter Cronkite anymore. And when you look at the way our districts are set up across the country, right? We are in, increasingly um, in an election system that is setting up districts for uh, design for a particular outcome, right? We have to have so many Republicans, so many uh, Democrat districts, right? And when you do that, you find an increasing amount of polarization uh, in, that, in that district, right? Because you're a Republican in a Democrat district or, or vice versa. Now imagine what that looks like when you're an independent, right? Or you're a, a libertarian in your district. And so when we, we look at the numbers to begin with, right, we know, um, and I'm gonna talk about primaries here in just a minute, but we know about 30 to 35% of people are voting in our primaries, right? A, a, a clear minority of people voting in those districts to select those people that are going, that you're gonna have to choose from in the fall election where the majority of people are gonna vote, right? We have a minority a small minority of people um, that are doing that in, in, our, in our primary election right now. And um, we, we know, I know personally, um, about the polarization that occurs in that primary system when you, when you have people in a position of power or special interests who try to take advantage of 15% of the vote in that primary to determine what the outcome is gonna be in that fall election, right? And they know we're a cheap date as a state, right? I had a group my very first term uh, who had a, a meeting in Kalispell to tell everybody that my parents weren't married when I was born, among other things, uh, because I was a bad guy because I wouldn't sign their pledge sheet, you know? Never gonna happen, right? I, I, I pledged to work for the people of my town, not to work for some, you know, out of state outfit and and uh, you know, try to carry their their luggage, and so you know, they spent a bunch of min money bringing people to town uh, while I was in session. So I drove home to meet them and have a really nice conversation with them. Not so nice, but uh, you know, uh, about why they were there, right? I mean, it's I'm not guessing. I've been involved with it, and I and I've seen it. We know when we look at polls that the, the um, approval rating for those of us that have served is, um, is pretty low. And it isn't because there aren't good people serving, right? I've had my hand on the wheel. It's because we've given them a stacked deck. For starters in primary systems where special interests can take advantage, you know, of what I call that choke point, you know, where we have a small advantage or, or a small number of people who are voting, and a small number of those people can have an undue advantage um, in our election process. And special interests know it, and the money in politics now, um, the Senate race that we're gonna have in the state, some estimate is gonna be $400 million. $400 million for one race in the state of Montana, right? And we're gonna, and we're focused, particularly on primaries, of course, like I said, um, in these, you know, in these small areas that people, um, you know, uh, um, don't show up as much as, as we'd hope they were. We also know about 40% of people, um, and this number is increasing, right? So an increasing number of people don't identify with a specific party. And they show up to the primary election and they're told you can only vote for part of the people that are qualified to be on the ballot. We're only gonna let you select from part and you're gonna to have to identify with a party, even though you don't, right, before you choose. And they feel completely disaffected, right, by that system. You know, a system that says, and think about in your life, what, what else do you use that process for, right? I'm gonna need a good heart surgeon, so I'm only gonna look through A through G Right? I'm not gonna consider anybody else, even though they might be really good, 
right? What other process do we use like we use in our system? So the first thing we want you to know is CI-126 establishes an open primary system where you have one ballot, where everybody is on it that is qualified to be in the election, right? You get to decide from that list who you think is the most qualified, who you think you wanna represent you. You don't get just part of the list, right? To, to be able to look at, to decide whether or not. You have the freedom to choose who you want to represent you. What a crazy idea, right? And yet we, we have a system currently that doesn't allow us to do that. So for starters, we think that's important and the top four of that group go to the uh, general election. And that's about choice and competition, right? And we, as, as politicians, we talk about this all the time, how competition is a good thing. Competition is gonna give us better results, better outcomes. I, I believe it, I've seen that in my life, and yet it applies to everything we talk about except us, right? Then we want less choice, less competition, thank you, right? Where you come out of that primary system and maybe you have um, a couple of people go to the general election and you have a number of those general election races that are non-competitive non or there's one person in it, right? And I'm gonna give you some examples of how when these re reforms have been enacted, because it's not a theory anymore, right? We have actual examples to look at how that's increased that kind of choice and competition and that's good for you. And that's why I'm here, why I'm involved in this. It's when I got done with, with my service um, uh, in the legislator, uh, legislature and I was termed out, I had to ask myself, what is the most important thing I think that I can devote my time and energy to? And it's this. It's the fundamental reform that puts you back in charge of hiring who you want to represent you and not giving you know the special interests a choke point um, to, to be able to take advantage of or the people that like power in the hands of just a few people right who can kind of select and tell you who you should be choosing or you should be choosing everything in my life everything else tells me about the importance of having that choice and that ability that that competition to drive better outcomes so CI 126 does that. That one ballot, everybody that's qualified is on it. Top four go to the general election. We also have CI 127 that says at the end of the day, you have to have a majority to win. Okay, and we think that's important for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's philosophically important that we say that the person that's represent, re representing us has had the support of the majority of people in their district, right, their constituency. But what we also know is that when they go to serve, I was in a, a district um, and I, I had seven contested elections. I'm proud to say I never had a close one. The people in my, in my district um, gave me great support, but it was more of a swing district and it made me have to work, right? I didn't get it just flip up, you know, a sign on the corner at the beginning of the year and know I was gonna get elected at the end of the year. I had to do crazy stuff like go talk to people at their doors, right? Show up to events, return emails and phone calls, right? I had to, I had to govern more broadly. My service in a district like that forced me to. And having a majority winner, I'm convinced, um, does the same thing, right? It will cause you to have to govern more broadly and not over in just one corner of, you, of your district. We think that's very important and we think it's important to our political process. But at the end of the day, what's important is when it goes on the ballot, I think it's important that you get to decide because that's what we're talking about, right? I, I don't get but just one vote on it either. You get to decide whether you think the person that represents you should enjoy the support of a minority or a majority of people, and whether you think that's important or not. So quick summary on those two, right? The one is everybody's on the ballot, top four go to the general election. When you get there, you have to have a winner that enjoys the support of everybody, you know, the majority of people in their district. 
And that's going to take, the, the third step of that is that's going to take some legislative action. Now, part of the reason we have two um, initiatives is because we have a single subject rule for initiatives in the state. Um, in fact, one of our initiatives was challenged on, the, on that issue and found to be um, to, uh, to meet the standard by the Supreme Court. But so that we both have that buy-in from the legislature and because we think that's the right place on a complicated issue to get this done, the uh, legislature is gonna have to decide how you do that, right? How do you decide a, a majority winner when you have, if you have somebody um, for, you know, that doesn't have a majority, you've got three people and, and the top person has 45%, okay? Now in my mind, they, they really are gonna have two choices, right? It's either gonna be through instant runoffs, you're gonna hear more um, about that from Eric in a minute, what that looks like, or through runoff races like they do in Georgia. And I, you know, my mm. personal opinion is I, I like the, the instant part of, of doing that, having a, a, a place and a position, but that'll be a legislative, um, you know, decision that has to be done as part of this. But at the end of the day, what we believe is these reforms, one, put you more in charge because it's gonna make it a lot harder if I have to have, if I'm the special interest coming in and I don't get to just pick on 15% and I have to go get, I have to now convince 51 plus percent of the people, makes it a lot harder for me to be able to do that, right? And, and I think that's one of the big important things. And you'll hear people talk about the party issues or candidates, hey, I don't think this does this, that, or the other thing for me. And I, I remind them, I'm not here for them. I'm here for you. I'm here to put you back in charge of who you select. Having more choice, right? And the, the ability to do these kind of things. So my, my last part of this is I, I want to kind of reinforce with you, I'm not guessing. It, both from my personal um, experience in these things, I'm here to tell you, look you in the eye and say, I can tell you these reforms will change the nature. It's not gonna change all the faces, right? It's gonna change the nature of the way they have to govern. And, and you see it when you're in the legislature, when the special interest fo folks show up and they start printing their, um, you know, their uh, scorecards and their, and their um, you know, they're, they're telling the legislature what they're gonna go back and talk to about in their primary. They don't ever talk about it in a general and voting behavior changes that quick, that day. And what we know is when other states have put these reforms in place, it has allowed those legislators to not have to worry about being picked off by 15% to more broadly represent people and, um, and they get better outcomes. One of those states is Alaska. So if, if you look at Alaska's result in just one term, what you see is you have a few more independents, really the makeup of the legislature to a great degree is the same, where you have a, a slight majority of Republicans um, over Democrats, a few more independents, but what you've seen now in one, in one election cycle is you have a bipartisan group that now caucuses together to govern the state. Talk about crazy ideas, right? <laughs> Republicans and Democrats and independents talking in a caucus about what they think is best for their state and what problems they should be working on. And they're working, speaking of crazy, they are working on crazy things like um, education and energy, right? And uh, workforce training. Imagine that, sitting down and reading about that in your newspaper, instead of some of the other things that we get tied up with, again, because of these special interests that wanna come in here, try to divide us, try to you know, force us to talk about subjects that I'll bet you're not talking about every night at your kitchen table, okay? So before I, I turn it over to Eric, my quick summary is to start at the end and work my way back. What do you want it to look like? 
what do you want your government to to look like how do you want it to serve you if you want the same system you have if you think and i was one of them right if you want those of us that help drive it in the ditch and are going to try to convince you that we're the only ones that can help drive it back out for you then you get to do that right if these if these get on on the uh, ballot and and i have a high degree of confidence that they will you're going to get to choose but if you're ready like i am for some reform that puts you more back in charge gives you more choice gives us more competition makes it harder for special interests to have an impact on our election system and who you hire then i'm here to encourage you to look strongly at these um, reforms and these measures and to understand what they do for you we've got some cards up front we've got a, a uh, website out there montanans uh, for electionreform.com it's on the on the front of them and uh, you know there's a way to get in touch with us um, to, have, to ask us more questions um, or of course if you want to financially support us etc our next step we just went through the legal phase where they're now the language has been acceptable we just got our last of, of the two here I think Monday of this week from the Secretary of State so we'll be moving into signature gathering that's about we're going to have to collect about 90 to 100,000 signatures between now and the middle of June. We think we'll be able to do that. It'll be a broad statewide effort. And then um, the rest of the work will be up to you in Good the fall question, of the election. If I could.